Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're going to be doing this scrap busting patriotic table runner right here. Nice and long, nice and big. I love this pattern. It's a little tricky. You do have to stay really organized. It has a lot of little scraps in it. Um, so again, it's a great scrap buster. Great for all those scraps you've been holding on to for all these months and years. Exactly. I'd love it if you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I always appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter where you can find all kinds of pictures that I post daily of all sorts of projects that I'm working on, that sort of thing. I'm at Create with Claudia. And lastly, and most importantly, you can find the full pattern for this patriotic uh, scrappy table runner on my website, www.createwithclaudia.com. There's a PDF that you can download, and there's a step-by-step -step photo tutorial as well, so that'll help you out. So thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the video. Okay, so we're ready to get started on the table runner. The first thing you need to know are a few specifics, and then I'll go over fabric uh, needs and then what we're going to cut and then I'll show you how to assemble it. So the first thing, and I actually printed out my pattern just so I could like it to use as a cheat sheet because there are a lot of little parts to this uh, table runner. The finished size is approximately 21 by 42 inches and I use a quarter inch seam allowance throughout, a nice scant quarter inch seam allowance. That's pretty much what I use for almost everything that I sew. And then you're going to need fabric. And for this, you're going to need red fabric, white fabric, and blue fabric. From the red fabric, you're going to need about three quarter yards, three quarters of a yard of scraps, various sizes. The smallest size you're going to need is two inches, the largest is four and a quarter. And as I said in the introduction, this is a fantastic scrap buster, especially if you keep all your little scraps like I do. But anyway, for the red fabric, you're going to need about three quarters of a yard. For the blue fabric, about a half a yard. And for the white fabric, about half a yard. And that's for the table runner top. And for the backing, about a, one yard. And you're going to have to cut that and sort of piece it together if you want to use one piece of fabric. You can also use scrap, scrap fabrics for the back as well. But about a yard will do um, is what you're going to need. And then binding, of course, depending on how you bind, um, you'll need some fabric for your binding. So let's get ready to cut. From your red fabric, you're going to need two inch squares and you're going to need a lot of them. I will say there's a lot of cutting. I stacked up a bunch at a time and cut them that way. It made it really quick and easy. But anyway, from the red, for two inch squares, you're going to need to cut 172 of them. So that's the red. Still staying on the two inch squares. From the blue squares, I'm sorry, from the blue fabric, two inch squares, you're going to need 124 of them. Okay, moving on to the white fabric, you're going to need to cut two and a half inch squares and you're going to need 32 of these. So 32 two and a half inch squares from the white fabric. Staying with the white fabric, you're going to need 30, I'm sorry, three and a half inch squares and you're going to need eight of those. So eight squares from the white cut three and a half inches. And then from the red, you're going to need one square cut four and a quarter inches, and this is for the flying geese. And lastly, from the blue fabric, you're going to need seven squares cut four and a quarter inches. So seven from the blue cut four and a quarter, and one from the red cut four and a quarter. And that's the fabric that you need. And now we're going to go ahead and start assembling these blocks. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to make some flying geese units. Yeah. So you're going to need to take your, you're going to need for the flying geese, you're going to need those large four and a half inch, excuse me, four and a quarter inch squares, the one that's in red and the seven that are in blue. And I'm just going to make you one of each color today. I'm not going to show you, uh, I'm not going to make every single one of them. And then you're going to need four squares, four of those white squares that were cut two and a half inches. So one of these and four of these, and this will turn into four flying geese units. So the first thing you want to do is on the wrong side of your white fabric, you're going to draw a line, and I already drew one here. I'm going to show you how to draw it though really quickly. Let's see. From corner to corner with a pencil or a, a, a marker that a um, erasable marker or something like that. 
or water soluble marker. I made a dark one just so you could see. I would not normally make my line that dark. This is going to be your sewing guide. And that's going to, what you're going to do once I place this on the red fabric, you'll see how you're going to sew alongside of it. So this one's real dark. I made that dark for you. You're going to take that big square, line up right sides facing. Make sure, put that one square in that corner. Make sure it's lined up nicely. And then you're going to go to your other corner, the opposite corner. And this one, I, you can see on the line, I just didn't draw it. I didn't draw it quite so dark. Line that up like so. And then hopefully you can see, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker so you can see it. That'll help out a little bit. I know it's hard sometimes on the camera. Sometimes I forget I'm on the camera when I'm doing this. So, draw that, line those up nice and even, and then you can see how that line just continues. This is your sewing guide, and you're going to sew a quarter inch down each side of this dark line. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you what it looks like, and then we're on our way to make those flying geese units. Okay, so there we go. I have sewn down each side of that dark line, and now what we're going to do is take our rotary cutter and cut along that drawn line. We're going to split this in half. So you need your rotary cutter and a ruler. This one is not quite long enough, but we'll make it do. That's okay. Alright, this is my trusty ruler. And that splits in half. And then what we're going to do is press those open like that, and it almost looks to me like a spaceship or something. So I'm going to press those open, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here you go. This is what they end up looking like. Like I said, I think they remind me a little bit of spaceships. And then we have one more step to go with these two units to make it into the four flying geese. So you're going to take two more of those white squares that you drew the diagonal, diagonal line on, and this time you're going to line it up in this corner, like so, and again you're going to sew a quarter inch, scant quarter inch down each side of that drawn line. And you're going to repeat that with this one. And when we're done, you'll see you have one more step and then you have four flying geese units. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Alright, so I have sewn these down. You can see I've sewn on both sides of that drawn line. We're going to give this one more cut in half along that line that you drew earlier. So I need my rotary cutter. I'm going to split that in half, like so. Fold that over, and there's your flying go uh, geese unit or goose unit. We are going to need to trim this down a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the other one and then um, press it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so they are pressed, and I always, like I said, I think it's a little bit like a magic trick. When you have one square, two squares of fabric, you can make four of these units. So there they are. The last thing I need to do is trim these all down to two inches by three and a half. And I'll show you how to do one of those. Now, there are flying geese rulers available. I do not have one, so I just use my six and a half inch ruler here. It works just fine. It just takes a little bit of patience and hopefully if I sewed it right. So basically you want to make sure you have a quarter inch seam. Let's see if I can use a pencil to point. You want a quarter inch seam here to the top. So you want to straighten that side out first. This is just about right. Sometimes if you're lucky you don't even need to trim it. Um, I'm not that good of a... Oh, I'm not that good of a seamstress, so I definitely like to straighten mine out a little bit, but you can sort of eyeball it a little bit. That's where those little those rulers do come in handy. I will not fib on that. So I use I have a little quarter inch right there. And just trim off. Doesn't take a lot. All right. So there's your starting point. And now what you're going to do is you're going to measure two inches down. Like so, I'm going to line up my two inches here. So I am going to trim off. You see I have a little bit of trimming here on the bottom. Okay, so 
there's your two inches. And then we want to cut the three and a half inches of the width. Now, this will be your center point, so it's going to be one and three quarter inch measurement, if my math is right. I have to remember my math. And so I go over here to, this is one inch to three quarters, and I sort of center that right on that point, and I line it up. That's my way of figuring out that I'm okay. Make sure my line here is even with my line there, so it's nice and straight. Whoops, well, and then you shift it. Shifted it out of the way, so that didn't work. Restart this here. Okay, try it again. So cut off that end, and then flip it around, and cut off this end. This one's the easiest because you can measure three and a half, and then you make sure your line is good here. And there you go. There is one flying geese unit, two, in, two inches by three and a half. And I'm gonna need to cut the rest. And then we are finally ready to assemble all the blocks and put this table runner together. All right, so everything is cut, everything is ready to assemble. Now we've got all our squares, all our half uh, flying geese, we're ready to go. This pattern, and if you go to the website, I've broken it down, there are a number of different blocks, they're lettered. So you have block A, block B, block C, on down the line. And the layout I did is labeled like such. So that's how your blocks are. So I'm gonna show you how each block is drawn. I'm not going to sew every single one, that would take too much time. But I'm gonna show you how they're laid out, show you how they're sewn, and then we'll lay out the whole top and I will sew it together. So I will keep this out just as my little cheat sheet and I also have my pattern. We're gonna start with block A, and we need those red squares. So here's block A, and for block A, you need nine squares of, two, nine of the two inch squares of red fabric. And you're gonna lay them out like so. This is a traditional nine patch. There you go. And how you're gonna sew them, you're gonna sew, I sew my blocks by rows, so I would sew this to this, this to this, this to this, and then add this to this one, this to this, this to this, and then I would sew my rows together. So once that was sewn, I would sew that, and then that to that. Once that's all done, you get a block that looks like this. And that's just your traditional nine patch and that is for A, and of that you're gonna make 12 of those blocks. So you need 12 nine patches in red. So that's for block A. Block B, you're still sticking with those smaller two inch red squares. This time, however, you're going to need 12 of those squares, and you're going to lay them out four across, and three down. Like so. And you end up with a block that looks like this. So it's four across and three down. And for that, for B, for this unit, you're going to need two blocks like this, so two units that look like B, okay? For unit C, we're still sticking with those red squares, and for this one you need eight of the red two-inch squares. And you end up with a block that looks like this, and you're going to need four of those, so four of unit C. Ooh, now we're getting to the blue, and this is for D, and this is probably the easiest one. And you're gonna need, for this one, you need four of the two inch blue squares, and you're just making a simple four patch, however you want, and you end up with an easy four patch, and that's uh, unit D, and you need four of those. For E, sticking with the blue, 
you're going to need 12 of the 2 inch blue squares. Okay, and you lay them out as so, so you end up with a block that looks like this with some red fuzzies on it. And you need four of those. So you need four that, are, that look like this for unit E. For F, you need six of the blue, you need six of the blue squares laid out like so, and sew them together until you come up with a unit that looks like that. That is F and you need four of those. Now G, and this is when you start using those flying geese that we made earlier. You need two of the blue flying geese and four of the two inch squares. And they get sewn together like so. And for this one, you want to piece the center section first together and then sew these uh, geese on the end, sort of like the wings. And you come up with a block that looks like this. And that's G, and you need three of those. So three blocks that look like this. We're almost done, I promise. There are a lot of different little parts, but I, I assure you the result is really beautiful. So for H, you're going to need one of the flying geese in blue, and then four of the blue two inch squares. You're gonna lay them out as so. Again, piecing this unit together first and then attaching that like that with the point facing outwards. And when you're done, it looks like this, and you need six of those, so six of H. I, okay, I is a beauty, and it's like a sawtooth square. For I, you will need four of your red two inch squares. You will need two of your red uh, flying geese, two of your blue flying geese. And this gets laid out like so. That's how it's going to get laid out. And like the others, it's, it's just the same. It just looks a little different. You're going to sew this to this, this to this, this to this, and then add that to this row, so and so, and then piece your rows together. You're going to need to pin with this one. This one has a little bit a uh, little bit sharper corners. You want to make sure to get those points nice and sharp too. But once that's all sewn together, you get a block that looks like this, and that's I, and you need two of those. And last but not least is J. And for J, you need one of the three and a half inch squares and two of the blue flying geese, and they get laid out like this. Sew them together, you sew this to this, that to that, press it, and you end up with a block that looks like that. And you need six of those, so six of J. And now we're finally ready to go ahead, once these are all sewn together, and we're gonna lay this table runner out, and I'm gonna actually move the camera over to the floor because it's a little long for my surface and we are ready to go and sew it together. Okay, so here it is all laid out on the floor. It took a little while. Uh, it's ready to go. We're ready to sew it together now. The way to do this table runner is you're gonna sew it in the columns. Okay, now you can see that I've sewn all the individual columns together, okay? And now we're ready to sew the columns together and finish up this table runner. Okay, so here's a look at the finished top and now I'm ready to baste it together uh, with its backing and the batting. So I'm gonna move this back over to the table and I'll show you my backing and my batting and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so before I take this over to the machine to quilt it, I just wanna show you up close. There's some strings here I need to get rid of. Uh, you'll see all the lines, they hopefully line up as well as possible. Sometimes it's a little tricky with these uh, smaller, with uh, uh, quilt tops that have so many small pieces. 
Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quilt it. I'm going to quilt it in the ditch along these sashes like that. It's not, it's not heavy duty quilting or anything like that. It will make it go nice and quickly and I should be finished soon. Here is the backing I chose. I actually pieced together some 10 inch squares that I had. And that's what it's going to look like. Again, lots of threads. Love those threads. <laughs> It takes me half the time just to cut all those away. But anyway, this would be the back. So I would lay this down with the wrong side facing up, and then I would put batting on it in the, in the center, like so. I mean, I, I would take this a lot more care. And I would, I pin based, so I would baste it with, a, with pins. And then I'll lay this on top, and then I'll go ahead and quilt that. So when I come back, I'll show you the whole table runner. So here it is, here's the finished scrappy table runner, patriotic table runner. I think it looks terrific. I think the white stars really make it glow, um, especially with that red and that blue. This could easily be changed up to use a different color scheme, maybe green and red for Christmas, or you know, maybe pastels for Easter, whatever you want to make this for. It's just a really nice table runner. It does take a little bit of cutting and a lot of organization, but I think the results are really worth it. And don't forget that the pattern is available on my website, www.createwithclaudia.com. There's a PDF and step-by-step -step photo instructions. And if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it when I get new subscribers. Thank you so much. And lastly, I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, so you can check those out too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you give this table runner a try and have a great day.